With a packed house against Ball State, Hoosier fans were let down as the Cardinals claimed the victory, leaving Kellen Lewis and the offensive line in a scramble. We knew going in Ball State was going to be a really good team to face, you know, and I mean, I think they hands down they can compete with anybody in NCAA Division I football. We know that we're a great team and we know if we came and we played our football, we should have won this game, but we didn't, we didn't come out here, we didn't, we didn't play like we were supposed to. Uh, made a couple mistakes and I mean they took advantage of our weaknesses and they got up on us. You know I, I think it, it was just a case we we never really got in, in great rhythm the second half. The Hoosiers only managed to score one touchdown struggling all day to find their rhythm. You know they did a good job of keeping everything underneath and uh, you know forcing us to run and uh, you know maybe you know maybe we just weren't patient enough obviously uh, we had quite a bit of yardage I don't know you know like the final set I think we had like 360 something yards but uh, you know, no touch, not enough touchdowns, so, uh, you know, yardage and stats are nothing if you can't put points on the scoreboard. You know, I think probably everybody thought at halftime it was going to be a, you know, kind of a shootout second half, and it really wasn't until, um, you know, we, we had some opportunities and we just didn't take advantage of it. You know, I kind of play them over my head right now. It was a play here, a play there. Um, they kept our drives from going. We didn't get any real big plays. You know, they're going to come in here and see if they can get some wins and see if they can bully us a little bit. And uh, we, like I said, we got to learn to play four quarters. So uh, a setback, I don't know, but uh, definitely a lesson learned that uh, we, we got to learn how to play all four quarters. With the Hoosiers in Bloomington, I'm Katie Spencer, Hoosier Sports Night. The Hoosiers defense had been stout in their first two performances of the season, mainly because of their ability to control the line of scrimmage. Their performance versus Ball State told a different tale. They found the weak, the weak gaps. The, they, they, they were cutting it back to, you know, if areas where you know no one, no one was there, and they just kept taking advantage of it. And if something worked for them, they kept running it, and we didn't uh, pick it up fast enough. The Hoosiers didn't record a sack for the first time this season, and the lack of pressure led to 463 total yards by Ball State, and their inability to close allowed standout QB Nate Davis to create when he was on the run. He makes that first guy miss, and he's, he's, he moves much better than, you know, some people may think he does. And he, can, he gets key first downs on his, you know, moving as well, and he's hard got a sack. We had to get to him in order you know, to win this game, and that's something we didn't do as a D-line. But we did have opportunities where we could have brought him down, and we didn't. So, I mean, that's on us as well. The team may not see this as a setback, but they will definitely need to improve their performance as the season goes along. In Bloomington, I'm Josh Greenberg, who's your sports night. Ball State is not short of playmakers, including 5'10 wide receiver Dante Love. The Cincinnati native came into the game versus IU, leading the nation in receiving yards per game and was nearing the career reception marks for Ball State receivers. What no one expected was how he would exit the game. Ronan O'Shea has the story. There are moments in sports when statistics, scores, and rivalries don't matter. When a near-capacity crowd can be brought to an eerie silence by the violent, gruesome side of America's favorite sport. On Saturday night at Memorial Stadium, Ball State wide receiver Dante Love was forced to leave the game in a stretcher after experiencing a gut-wrenching hit. Dante Love's record-setting season quickly turned into a nightmare after being leveled by IU freshman Chris Adkins with 10.45 to play in the first half. Doctors quickly rushed to the senior receiver's side as his teammates and parents looked on in disbelief. After a 15-minute delay, Love was carted off the field and taken by ambulance to Bloomington Hospital for further tests. Following the game, Hoosiers players and coaches expressed their concern for their fallen Ball State brother. Uh, you know, certainly our prayers are with him and, and uh, hope that, our, you know, everything works out well for him. But, uh, that it, that's it's very very hard, especially a young guy like that. That's you know, not only because he's a good, good player, but uh, you hate to see anybody get hurt like that. I, I couldn't do nothing but but uh, pray for him and um, being the captain of this team, our, our hearts and our prayers go out to Dante Love and his family and the entire Ball State football team. Uh, but the best of wishes go out to him because I know, uh, like I said, he's a really really talented player, and uh, I hope he gets out on the field uh, really quickly. Overnight, Love was transferred to Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis and underwent a grueling five-hour surgery on his spine. Sunday afternoon, Ball State team physician Jay Matchett released this statement. Dante Love suffered a cervical spinal cord injury fracture, which required surgery to stabilize the fracture. He is currently moving all four extremities. Love entered play as one of the nation's top receivers, averaging an NCAA best 144.3 reception yards per game. 
He became an instrumental part of Ball State's success as the team is off to its best start ever. But Saturday night's historic win has lost some of its shine as Cardinals fans, players, and coaches continue to pray for love. At Memorial Stadium, I'm Ronan O'Shea, Hoosier Sports Night. The men's soccer team welcomed Wisconsin into Bill Armstrong Stadium. We have the highlights next. And the volleyball team took part in the TIS tournament over the weekend. Would they survive an early surge by the George Mason Patriots? We'll have that after the break. 